uh, increasingly nonprofit organizations concerned about the future of official development assistance are looking to a new source of funding, ultra high net worth individuals. So as these mega donors, like the growing number of billionaires here in Silicon Valley and beyond, consider what causes they want to support, there is an opportunity for international NGOs to engage them. But the question becomes, what are the best practices for engaging these donors? Today, we're going to hear from experts who have been successful in navigating this funding opportunity. And we're looking forward to being able to draw on their expertise. I'll start with a brief overview of the trends. Then we'll take the case study of Maverick Collective and chat with one of its co-founders, Kate Roberts on how it became a part of the strategy at Population Services International. Next, Allison Powell, Senior Director of Philanthropy at the Bridgespan Group, will walk us through some research on trends in giving and also provide us with some tips for success in engaging these high net worth and ultra high net worth donors. And finally, Atul Tandon, the CEO of Opportunity International, will share another case study from his organization with a focus on how to get donors to the table and keep them there. So before we get started, I wanted to mention that we really want this webinar to be conversational and shaped by your interests and your questions. So please feel free to submit your questions at any time, and I'll do my best to weave them into the discussion. So we looked at the largest donors, um, living donors in the U.S., those who had signed the Giving Pledge, those who were you know, in the Forbes Top 50, and, and identified that actually in their public statements, Dramatic social change was really among the top two or three priorities they had. So they were making statements about ending malaria, reducing genocide, stopping modern slavery, really aspirational um, and bold statements. However, you know, when we dug into the data, and this was looking at both institutional philanthropy and, um, don and individual donors, we looked at commitments of $10 million or above over the last decade plus and found that so only 20% of those biggest commitments were going to social change. And so the large bulk of those largest commitments were going to more institutional causes like higher education institutions, hospitals, et cetera. And so we really dug in to try to identify, you know, why is this happening? Where is the gap? Because we do believe that donors have these really bold aspirations. Um, and we identified in a lot of conversations and in really interrogating our own work and experiences two categories of things, and one are, we would call kind of quote-unquote deal-making challenges, which is that, you know, oftentimes when donors go out to their alma mater or to an arts institution, there really is more of a kind of drawer full of options for them at different price points. So imagine if you're talking to, you know, Harvard or Stanford or some such institution, they have, you know, a whole menu of things you can pick from if you want to give a six-figure, seven-figure, you know, eight-figure gift. Nonprofits, for very good reason, don't often haven't often invested you know the time and energy in kind of building up that menu of options. So here's a question: For organizations that are strapped for resources to invest in fundraising, what are the key investments that we should focus on to get a foothold with this type of donor? Yeah, it's a really good question, and I think um, when I, when we think about the big bets analysis and, and I mean I think that the framework that we've laid out is actually quite beneficial from an impact perspective. So something that I thought was funny um, was the talk that some of my colleagues gave at school. So someone wrote an article about it and said this was built as sort of a big bettable workshop but actually it was more about how do you lay out you know the impact you're trying to get and how do you mm -hmm. sort of plan for, for how to use these dollars. And that's much more kind of the sweet spot of bridge span is, is strategy, strategic clarity, um, et cetera. And so I think even for organizations who don't have a big development group, you know, having your senior leader sit down and say, you know, it doesn't have to take six months, but just to do something a couple of days to say, what what are some options for some sort of a, a, a milestone or point of arrival? What are some, some things that could be really powerful? And then if we were to do the thought exercise of removing money as a constraint, what becomes our constraints? Why is it hard to do those things? And I think just having, um, we've heard from many nonprofit leaders that just kind of going through that rigorous thinking is really powerful because then they can take themselves out of their jargon and take themselves a little bit out of the way they normally talk about their work, and they're speaking almost in a different language. 